Cuphead. What? I kind of feel bad for him. I mean, he's just that crying. Do you recognize these voice actors from the Cuphead show? With all of them having a background in either acting, comedy, writing, or all of the above, it makes sense why the anticipation for the new season has been off the charts. Number 1. The creators behind the show always wanted Cuphead to have an East Coast accent. Now let's go blow stuff up! But luckily, True Valentino didn't have to study too hard. He pulls from his mom's subtle yet noticeable New Jersey accent. The creators also gave him a few old school animated movies from the 1940s to get inspiration from. There are also some mob movie vernaculars thrown in there as well. Today we'll be playing the Cuphead video game as Cuphead and Mudman. And here we hot and pepper. Number two, also known as Mugman, Cuphead's slightly more responsible brother. Wait, don't touch it! What if only the devil can use it? Frank Todaro has been a Cuphead fan since the video game was first released. He did play it, but he wasn't very good at it. He failed many times, but kept playing it because he just loved the visuals. He wanted to see more of it. Though he says the origin of Mugman's voice was a collaborative effort, they did give him references like Lou Costello. I got this one! I got this one! I don't got this one! He spoke with Game Rant about what it was like to emulate a 1930s cartoon character. For me, I like to say it's as close to time travel as you can get, because you basically go back in time and originate a character from an older era of animation. Number 3. Luke Millington Drake is a showstopper as the hilariously evil sassy devil. The sound of screaming! <laughs> oh, what a delicious day! A dual citizen in both the United States and the United Kingdom, he decided to try out his hand in Los Angeles, where he found the improv and sketch comedy theater that he's still part of today, the Groundlings Theater. It really was my drama school, my bachelor's kind of all rolled into one. It seems like it was well worth whatever tuition was paid, because we couldn't imagine anyone else playing the role of the devil. Number 4. Johanna plays Cuphead and Mugman's father figure, Elder Kettle. They live with their guardian slash father figure, Elder Kettle. ENOUGH! One thing that stayed true to the Cuphead mythology was the fact that the two brothers lived with him in the woods. Johanna is such a seasoned voice actor and performer, with one of his first roles in Project A dating all the way back to 1983, it makes sense that the role of Elder Kettle would come naturally to him. Number 5. King Dice, our favorite charismatic game changer. Y'all might know me as the devil's right hand man. Wayne Brady is a comedian, actor, and singer. His combination of skills is a big part of the reason why he was so perfect as King Dice. We knew we needed to get someone who had a huge amount of charisma. They needed someone who could host, sing, dance, basically do it all. Wayne Brady was just like, he's super funny, he can actually sing like crazy. Needless to say, Wayne Brady was the obvious choice for the role of King Dice. Who will be the first lucky contestant to roll the dice? Number 6. How could we not be excited about this? If you've seen her as the hilarious and brilliant Naja on What We Do in the Shadows, you were probably excited about it too. If me and Laszlo were to have ever had a child, I like to imagine it would look like him. She's perfectly cast as the infamous sea monster Cala Maria, who in the video game is a major force to be reckoned with. In the Cuphead show, they balance her super scary sea monster vibes with her naturally hilarious show-stopping comedy. She is also known as a comedian and screenwriter, creating and co-starring in a sketch show on BBC called Ellie and Natasha with her comedy partner Ellie White. Number 7. Not only does Dave voice the devil's dim-witted lackey henchman, The boss! Wakey wakey! But he's also a major producer on the show. Though he wouldn't describe himself as a gamer, he was a big fan of the Cuphead game because of its impact on the animation community. He didn't play it because it was way too hard for him, but he watched the whole thing play out on YouTube. When he heard there was interest in turning it into a show, he knew he had to figure out how to get involved. Number 8. Also known as Miss Chalice who actually makes her debut much earlier than her originally scheduled appearance in the Cuphead DLC. The Delicious Last Course Grey is a high-profile voice actor who has been part of a large variety of animated shows and video games since the early 90s. 
Her performance journey started on some simple advice from a friend who said that she should try comedy because she was so naturally hilarious. So she did. In her stand-up routines, she did a lot of impressions, which got the attention of a casting director, and the rest was history. She can literally transform into any voice from your childhood. <laughs> Number 9. Another performer who does it all. Co-executive producer Cosmo Sigerson and season 2 voice of Elephant, Parrot, and Lefty has worked a whole lot in the world of animation with content like SpongeBob SquarePants, Rocco's Modern Life, Despicable Me, and Camp Laszlo. When it came to the Cuphead show, finding the right cast and crew to bring these characters to life was hardly a challenge for him. We really looked long and hard to find the right fits for every position on this project. Number 10, also known as the lovable, short-lived, and simply unhinged Bull Boy. He also voiced Blue from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Bosch von Rosenberg from Final Fantasy VII, and Reaper from Overwatch. Lay it on me, Double B. I've never done any of this crazy stuff before. Did you recognize his voice from any of his previous works? Number 11, he not only voices Stickler in season two, but he also voiced Sherman in Season 1, Episode 3, Ribby and Croaks. He's worked on a multitude of different projects, like Doctor Strange, It Chapters 1 and 2, and Fear the Walking Dead. But according to his Instagram post, he loved getting the opportunity to voice the hilarious and appropriately named character, Stickler, in The Cuphead Show. Number 12. Not everything is as it seems. The water being known as Quadratus is found on Inkwell Isle 2 and luckily requires no bosses to be defeated in order to see him in the video game. I am Quadratus the Great and Wise. Come closer, young one. Quadratus simply looks like a pool of water, but when you approach him, a face that looks like an old bearded man appears. That face is voiced by Gary Anthony Williams. Williams is an actor, writer, and comedian from Atlanta, Georgia. You might recognize him from his performance as Uncle Ruckus from The Boondocks, Bebop from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, and Tarek Jackson from Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. Number 13. Candy Milo has been on tons of animated gems. Some of them include Dexter's Laboratory, Codename Kids Next Door, Astro Boy, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and many, many others. In the Cuphead show, she voices the character of Brandywine. She grew up the daughter of a comedian and did stand-up herself for many years. When it comes to doing voiceovers, though, she prefers it to any other form of acting. I can be whatever I want to be. There are no restrictions. It's the, it's the greatest form of acting ever. So did you recognize any of these famous voice actors from their previous work? With these actors coming from such creative backgrounds, it makes sense that the Cuphead show would be built around this stellar cast. Who's your favorite character? 